Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to my presentation. My name is Jordy. I'm part of the Scalable Solvers Group. And today I'm going to talk about comparing the fast mGrid and pair real methods, which are parallel in time methods used for solving time dependent differential equations. So, to introduce the problem we're looking at here, the research problem, numerical integration methods are classical methods for solving time dependent differential equations. And these methods are typically highly sequential. And what I mean by that is at some uh, time step, some current point in time in, in the equation, uh, that information is needed for the next time step. So you can imagine this, this, uh, this sequential time stepping scheme, which I'll show uh, a graphic for in the next slide. So parallel and time methods provide um, much needed parallelism for this sequential scheme, especially when many time steps are required. The challenge is that different parallel and time uh, algorithms are difficult to compare because there's so many different parameters to consider, and I'll get into all these different parameters later. Um, and so this top talk presents the first comparison of the three most popular uh, parallel and time methods, the fast mGrit and parareal methods. And specifically fast and mGrit, which are high, very popular methods, uh, they have not yet been compared in the, in the literature. So to give sort of a graphical introduction to classical time stepping schemes, um, time dependent differential equations typically have this form here in the equation at the top where you have a spatial component and a temporal component. Of course, this is a simple example. This is the heat equation, but um, even more complicated uh, differential equations look similar to this. So in classical time integration methods, um, the temporal component is what we're considering solving. And I'll talk about the spatial component in a second. But like I said before, a classical time stepping scheme uh, is highly sequential. It starts with some uh, initial time step um, shown as u0 here, this, this hump, and then sequentially steps along until the final time step where uh, a convergence is achieved. And this f, I'll, I'll introduce this f uh, uh, mapping here, which I'll call the time stepper. So this can be, for example, implicit Euler method or runga kutta method. Um, different time steppers have different accuracy and um, when I talk about mGrit and parareal, I'll touch on that a little bit more. So where is there the opportunity for parallelism in classical methods? Well, parallelism is typically exploited in the spatial solve. So just like the temporal grid of time points that I showed in the previous slide, the, there's a discretization in space as well where um, we have some number of space points. In this case, I'm showing a four by four grid. So this is a 2D problem, which is why it's a 2D grid here. And if we want to uh, make the solve parallel, we take these, this four by four grid and split it up between some number of processes. So for example, here we have four processes and we have four points per process. And we could even add more parallelism with eight processors and then we have a single point per uh, processor but then we cannot continue to add any more parallelism here. And also going from four to eight processors might not even give us additional speed up uh, since communication costs need to also be considered. So if we consider this eight processor case, we only have a single point, which means the computation is reduced, but the communication um, can therefore have a much higher cost than the computation. So we can see that um, at some point adding more and more processors in the spatial solve doesn't give us any additional speed up, which is the motivation for adding processors on the temporal domain. So parallel and time methods allow for parallelism in both the space and time directions. And the general idea is that you have an expensive fine grid that is carried out, the computation is carried out in parallel, and a cheap coarse grid that uses a sequential time stepper. So what I mean by coarse grid is that it can have fewer time points than the fine grid. It can have a lower order accuracy method that's used. Um, there are various options for how to choose that coarse grid. But generally you have a fine time stepper and 
processes uh, execute that time stepper in parallel and then a course time stepper which is done sequentially and here I have a graphic where um, we have three processors three uh, time processors that do this fine time stepping two points per processor and then you have this three points on the course grid so the course grid is has has half as many points and of course you can continue to add parallelism in these spatial dimensions uh, as well as you can see here we have four uh, space processors as well and unlike uh, classical methods this scheme is iterative so in in classical time stepping methods only one pass over the time points is required for convergence in parallel time methods you iteratively um, use the course or apply time steppers on the course and fine grid so now I want to talk about the algorithms that we're going to be comparing and the first is the parareal algorithm and this is the most classical of the three um, while it is classical it's still used in practice and is highly popular um, and the general steps of parareal are very close to how I introduced parallel in time we have a we transfer the course grid and solve in parallel on the fine grid and then we transfer that fine grid result to the course grid and solve in serial there and then this is iterative so you simply repeat steps one and two until some convergence criteria is met and to be more precise about uh, the algorithm itself um, we have this f uh, um, time stepper like I showed in the previous slide that apply, is applied in parallel and then this course time stepper G that is applied in serial and then the combination or the the um, transfer of of G to F is shown in the last line here so parareal is a more classical algorithm than M grit and fast while it is still a popular algorithm um, there are various properties of it that uh, motivate the development of other parallel in time such as uh, M good or fast so first just uh, an important property about it is that when parareal converges it converges to the uh, to the serial solution corresponding to if we used the um, fine grid time stepper in serial instead of in parallel and the other is that the convergence depends on G so if we have an expensive G it'll converge faster and if we have a cheap G it'll take more iterations to converge and this actually makes the algorithm non scalable or not as scalable uh, um, since the bottleneck is this coarse grid and so that's one of the motivations for developing more robust parallel and time algorithms and then the other is that we can specially design uh, a parallel and time algorithm um, such that we can achieve higher order accuracy than what is achieved by the F and G time steppers. And that's one of the motivations for the FAST method. So the MGRIT method can be thought of as a natural extension of parareal to multiple grids. So MGRIT uses um, principles from multi-grid methods where we have a hierarchy of many grids not just two grids and this gives us a more scalable method so this hierarchy of grids we still have a coarsest grid which is that g time stepper um, and that still needs to be done sequentially but all the other grids that are finer than that grid um, can be processed in parallel so like I said, it's inspired from principles from multigrid and designed to have this uh, important multigrid property where the convergence rate is independent of the size of the largest time grid or equivalently the size of the coarsest grid. Um, and this allows it to be much more scalable since we can add more and more time steps and keeping that coarse grid just as coarse and still get the same convergence rate. MGrid is also non-intrusive. Parareal is non-intrusive as well, but what this means is that you can think of MGrid as being wrapped around an existing sequential time stepper, such as implicit Euler or Rungakutta. So it's fairly low effort if you already have a code that has Rungakutta, you can simply insert it into a code that uses MGrid um, and uh, you still get a you know the same uh, order accuracy as your uh, t uh, sequential time stepper method but it, using a parallel in time method so the last method I want to present is the fast method 
And this is a parallel in time method that's designed to achieve higher order accuracy with uh, a low amount of work. So using a low order method. And this will in turn uh, allow for using smaller time grids than if you were to use a standard time stepper such as implicit Euler or the Runge Kutta methods. Um, <clears throat> so it will require fewer time steps than those to achieve higher order accuracy than those methods. So this is done using the spectral deferred corrections method. And to just give an idea of what this method looks like, we have our time grid and within each time step, we divide, subdivide it up into smaller time points. And on those sub steps, we do sweeps of a low order method such as implicit Euler. And the more points we have in those sub steps, the higher order method we get. And so that allows for us to do, uh, to use fewer time steps, getting higher order methods, and it is specially designed to have multiple levels and run in parallel. And for those of you who are familiar with multigrid, um, fast is equivalent to a multigrid method where uh, we can think of these SDC, the spectral deferred Corrections sweeps as the smoother within multigrid. So mgrid is also a multigrid method with a specially designed smoother such that it has this optimal multigrid property. So both are very uh, similar in certain ways. Um, but unlike parareal and mgrid, it's it's not doesn't have that non-intrusive property where you can uh, wrap mgrid, you know, wrap mgrid or parareal around your current time stepper. The time stepper method is fixed within um, within fast. However, you really only need to provide um, the spatial solvers within FAST. So in a way, it's not intrusive in that sense. So now I want to go over the challenge of actually comparing these three algorithms. And the challenge arises from the fact that the parameter space for comparison is quite large. Um, there's, first of all, these different methods will do well on different problems. So that's, that is the first challenge. And then all these different parameters that you can tweak within each algorithm um, changes things. So for example, the solution in space, you, we need to choose a method for how we're solving the spatial component. Um, and within choosing a method, there's also the implementation of that method. So for example, if we want to choose geometric multigrid, there's uh, an extensive set of softwares that you could use to, to do that, um, that multigrid solve. And solving in the temporal direction is, uh, has the most parameters that can be tweaked and mainly factors that affect accuracy. So for example, the resolution of the time grids um, each, each method will require different resolutions. Um, and when we're talking about multiple grids, mgrid and parareal par uses two grids, mgrid and fast use multiple grids. So those, the resolutions of all the, the entire grid hierarchy will affect the convergence. The coarsening strategy for how you actually generate the hierarchy will affect convergence. Um, the number of grids, in the case of parareal, we're only using two grids, but the number of grids can be varied for the other methods. And then, of course, the time stepper that is used. So if, if you use an implicit Euler versus a fourth order Runga Kutta method within mgrid versus how many SDC nodes do you use within FAST? And another major um, parameter is the actual parallel implementation. So comparing these uh, methods, uh, if they're implemented differently, will give you very different performance. So now I want to talk about what software is out there. So there's the XBraid package, which is developed, which was developed at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, and this is developed by the team that um, created MGrid, and it provides implementations of Parareal and MGrid. And then there's the libfast package, which is de was, was developed here at LBL. And um, it provides implementations of Parareal Fast and now MGrid. So one of my contributions to this research, besides uh, our comparison study, was to actually implement MGrid into libfast using the communication primitives that are already within libfast. 
And our goal with this research really is to compare algorithms, not software. So we want to strip away any implementation differences between XBrave and LibFast that um, can make the, the comparison even more complicated. So before getting into some results, I want to go over the test framework. So the test problem here is the heat equation, which can be thought of as like the hello world of differential equations. And it's the heat equation on a temporal domain of zero to 0.1 with a spatial domain of a, a one by one 2D grid. And it has an initial condition, this wave initial condition here. And we ran our experiments on the NERSC Cori supercomputer, and we used the hyper package for the spatial solver. So this is a package of scalable algebraic and geometric multigrid methods. So we used their geometric multigrid solver. And this, the hyper people were, are also the people who developed XBrave. So they know their multigrid well. So here's our main result. And um, this is a strong scaling experiment where we have on the y-axis the wall clock time and on the x-axis the number of processes. And so since this is strong scaling, the, the temporal grid size is fixed. But for each line shown here, all five lines, the problem size is, is different. And the problem size is different because all these data points here achieve the same accuracy. And that's an important um, an important parameter to keep fixed for the comparison of these methods, since really what we want is for each method to converge to the same answer. So that means that uh, here at the top, the blue line here is MGRIT with a first order, uh, uh, this is implicit Euler, and the time grid, the finest time grid is about 4,000 points, which is why when we vary from one to 64 process, processes, we see almost perfect scaling. Um, but for the fourth order methods, so uh, as we look down here, we have MGRIT with fourth order Runga Kutta and Parareal with fourth order Runga Kutta. For these methods, the temporal grid is just size 64. So a very a much smaller uh, uh, number of time steps on the finest time grid than with the first order method. So in this case, we need far fewer points. And while it doesn't scale as good, so we can see that as we uh, round the 32 processes corner here, we start to see dim diminishing returns. The scaling is not good. The overall wall clock time uh, is much lower than MGRIT with a first order method. And we can also see that fast with fourth order. So we have MGRIT on fourth order for, for orange and fast fourth order on yellow. Uh, FAST is slightly faster simply because FAST is using these lower order methods to achieve higher order accuracy. So it's actually doing less work per iteration than, um, than MGRIT. And then if we add more SDC nodes, as I talked about earlier when introducing FAST, we get an eighth order method, which is what we see down here for the purple line. And for an eighth order method, we only need 16 points. So really for this problem, um, we probably don't even need to use parallel in time, but these results demonstrate something very important in that um, while scalability is important, accuracy is even more important. And if you can use fewer points and fewer processors, you might as well do that rather than going for the most scalable um, uh, type of result. And by the way, the accuracy for this is an error of one to the negative ninth, so high accuracy. So in conclusion, parallel and time methods provide much needed concurrency for solving time dependent differential equations. And this research focuses on comparing the fast MGRIT and parareal methods. And this is important since fast and MGRIT are two state of the art methods that have not yet been compared in the literature. The challenge of this, of course, is that there are so many parameters that affect how well any of these parallel and time methods do. And uh, a next step is to um, go to a more extensive set of more challenging problems to solve rather than the heat equation. The heat equation is a good starting point, but we want to look at some more challenging problems. What the heat equation really demonstrated here is that while scalability is important, even, what's even more important is what accuracy you can actually achieve with your methods, which is 
you know, the 16 time steps from the eighth order fast versus the 4,000 time steps from the first order M grit. Um, and lastly, thank you everyone for coming to my presentation and a special thank you to my mentors, Michael Minion and John Schaff.